what do you do about the Lakers right now? Who's a keeper on the team? How do you change the culture? What do you do? Oh, what are you asking me for? I'm not on work there. Right, but but Magic said <laughs> you're the first phone call, which means you two have been talking about this no, situation. No, Magic uh, reached out to me and let me know that he was hiring Rob. He's hiring RP. And uh, he and I talked about how great it was um, and what they want to do going forward. And I just told him how excited I was for Rob. I mean, this job is tailor-made for Rob. I mean, this is what he does. And uh, so I've just been excited for both of them. But in terms of an actual... How'd they lose their way? Place. You were on the team as the team lost its way. And how do you get it yeah, back? Well, things happen. Yeah, as you know. I mean, uh, um, things come and they go, right? It's a cyclical um, game. And you have your ups and you have your downs. And now it's time for them to start rebuilding and start putting pieces of the puzzle there that can win championships again. It's just part of the beast. When you have former players, whether it's aspiring to be a coach, which ain't you, an executive, or an owner, at least on an ownership level, does that intrigue you? Does that interest you? Is depends. that something? It depends. depends on what? Depends. You know, my, uh, my passion is storytelling, and I can't go away from that. This is what I love to do. I mean, this is what I get excited about waking up every single morning to do. Um, so are there ways that I can help the Lakers from that perspective? Yeah, maybe. Uh, uh, ownership perspective? Maybe. But you know I me, mean? I like being behind the scenes and being passive and things of that nature. You know? uh, if the phone call came, I would certainly listen. But in terms of being there every day and doing that. Well, not, not that, necessarily. That for me. Not necessarily. I, I, I hear you there. Not necessarily being there every day, but I'm just talking about from afar, but having a profound impact whenever you so choose. If you think about Magic, Magic's president of basketball operations. He's a day-to-day -day guy, mm -hmm. but he talks about leaning on somebody like you because of what you mean. Well, I'm to there me. now. I mean, they can call me now and ask for advice or you know what I think about this thing about that. I mean, I'm always around. So it's amazing how fast time flies. I mean, it's. Uh, it's pretty, pretty cool. When was, last, when was the last time you hooped? Uh, since I scored uh, 60. Mm. I mean, I, like, I'll shoot with my kids every right. now and then, but in terms of playing... Yeah, you know, th th that's, you know, you know, whenever we speak, it's amazing to me how you make no apologies for the fact that you really don't miss it anymore. You put in yeah. your time, it's enough, enough. You don't miss it. It's rare that you hear that from somebody. I know, it's strange. Yeah, it is strange. Give it your own. But, it's strange, but, but it's, a, it's a blessing, right? I mean, the, the, the thing, you know, when you grow up playing a game your whole life, and this is what you identify yourself with the whole time, mm -hmm. it's very hard to find something else, you know? And I've been very fortunate and very blessed to have a passion that I love every bit as much as playing basketball. Mm. And so when that happens, I'm extremely fortunate. But for the young guys coming up, as you're going through your career, it's important that you start looking for things that you are equally as passionate about. Because when that music stops and the game is over and you're just trying to figure it out after, you're already too late. For uh, a family who spends their hard earned money to come and watch their favorite players play and you know, they show up and the player's not playing, um, that's the tough part. Um, you know, I felt like if you could play, if you can play, you should go out there and play. If a coach said to you, you're not playing, would you have had an issue with it? Well, I, I, they're, they're I honestly, I've never, coach's decision. Yeah, I've never been approached yeah. by a coach and asked me to rest. Listen, you, you can build your game differently, right? And I think, you know, one of the things I learned from MJ is on second nights of back-to-backs, uh, when it's fourth game, five nights, whatever the case may be, the game would alter. You might change his game a little bit. I might be on the perimeter the first two games. Now I'm going to slide down to the post. I'm going to play a little closer to the basket. I'll play off the ball a little bit more. Right, so there are ways where you can kind of alter your game, where you can get rest within the game, mm. but still be efficient. You know, that's the tough part, is that when you miss a game, there's that one kid out there that's um, not going to see his favorite player play. Okay? Now, that being said, LeBron has done so much for the game, mm -hmm. right? So we need to give him, <laughs> he, he, he's earned the opportunity to be able to take a rest. He's earned that. Uh, we can disagree with it. Um, we feel absolutely terrible for the kids that come and watch him perform. But at the same time, this man has been to a finals pretty much every year for as long as I can remember. He's done so much to elevate the game. So he's earned the right uh, for us to give him the benefit of the doubt. Is that, is that something that ever crosses your mind or that you think about the fact that he wasn't on a good enough team to make the finals when you guys were dominant and then vice versa, that you never got to link up in a finals? 
Yeah, I thought in 2009 was a great opportunity for that to happen. Uh, I was hoping that was going to happen. It's great for the game. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen.